The possibility of life outside of Earth is something we've all pondered at one time or another. But whether we've been visited is another question. Although there are endless accounts of sightings, photographs, and even reports of abduction that might suggest that we have. The idea of alien life, friendly or hostile, has inspired great works of science fiction, but also a number of religious movements. Religions like Raelism, which state that God was an alien astronaut who cloned the first humans. And then the more controversial ones, like Scientology, whose doctrine of intergalactic warfare and reincarnation remains a topic of much secrecy and scrutiny. In this video, I want to investigate these so-called UFO religions. Where do they come from? What are their beliefs? And what do they teach us about how religions form and spread? Welcome to the Faith of the Future, where spirituality and sci-fi collide. Throughout history, there have been a number of unusual reports of unidentified flying objects frequenting our skies. In 1561, eyewitnesses reported eerie lights and tube-like rods floating over the German town of Nuremberg. This threw the townsfolk into a panic, for they believed it to be a bad omen from God. Even as far away as Japan, there are descriptions of an Utsuro Bune, a hollow ship that washed ashore in 1803, with a strange woman emerging from the wreckage. According to local legend, she was wearing strange clothes and could not speak a word of Japanese. But some of the oddest encounters might have been preserved in religious texts. A number of Hindu scriptures talk of fantastical machines known as Viminas. In the epic poem The Ramayana, they are described as flying palaces that travel across the sky. Within them live gods, demons, and heroic warriors. In the Bible, the Old Testament book of Ezekiel opens with an otherworldly vision of God's throne. Filling up the sky are a collection of remarkable, albeit frightening beings, one of which includes a group of interlocking wheels covered with eyes. In his book, The Spaceships of Ezekiel, retired NASA engineer Joseph Blumrich concludes that this Hebrew prophet might be describing an alien craft. But before we get too carried away, it's worth noting that there are alternative explanations for these phenomena. For example, those strange lights over Nuremberg could be a meteorological phenomenon known as a sundog. This happens when the sun's rays are refracted by atmospheric ice crystals, creating an illusion of multiple lights in the sky. Perhaps we're too quick to pull the alien card. Stonehenge? Aliens. The pyramids? Aliens. The Nazca Lines? Aliens. Often to the frustration of academic researchers, who devote their lives studying these magnificent, albeit very human, creations. Now, I admit, the concept of a UFO religion might sound a little ridiculous, and over the years it has been relegated to fringe writers and rogue scholars. In recent decades, however, this view has changed a bit. UFO religions have become a genuine topic of study. You see, these movements give us an insight into how religions form, and how they mature and spread. Even if you don't belong to a UFO religion yourself, or are skeptical of such things, a 2010 survey indicated that 10% of Americans have had some sort of UFO sighting in the last 40 years. Adding that up, that's approximately 33 million people. If UFO sightings are so widespread, why hasn't the study of it become more mainstream? The modern interest in UFOs can be placed on one year, 1947. The year contained two of the most famous UFO encounters. The first was near Mount Rainier, Washington State, where American pilot Kenneth Arnold claimed to have spotted nine flying objects travelling at lightning quick speeds. And a few months later, we have the famous Roswell incident, where an unidentified aircraft crashed in the deserts of New Mexico. Reports later revealed it to be a downed weather balloon, but at the time, people thought it was aliens. Many still do. As UFO mania grew, groups of people began to come forward claiming to have actually communicated with extraterrestrial intelligences. People like George Van Tassel, who was supposedly chatting with an entity called Ashtar, who hailed from the planet Venus. Or George Adamski, who was allegedly talking to a blonde-haired race of Nordic aliens. These individuals were known as contactees, for the straightforward reason that they were in contact with celestial beings. These contactees were able to gather a dedicated following. In time, new religious movements were set up around them. Like the Ministry of Universal Wisdom, for those who believed in George Van Tassel's correspondence with Ashtar. Since 1953, his followers have met up in the Mojave Desert, at a place called Giant Rock. These UFO conventions include group meditations and prayer, 
in the hopes of receiving alien communications from Ashtar. Using donations from his disciples, Van Tassel even built the Integratron, a small white domed structure which supposedly was capable of healing, anti-gravity and even time travel, according to him at least. Even if these early UFO religions are a little wacky and absurd, the concept of extraterrestrial intelligence, or even life on other planets, has posed some serious questions for the many mainstream world religions. Many of these faiths teach that humanity is at the centre of the universe, having the divinely ordained place as stewards of creation. If there are other life forms out there, especially intelligent ones, this means humanity is no longer that special, just one of many civilizations in the cosmos. And what does this mean for our relationship with the divine? Is God quite literally seeing other people? In response to these challenges, religious organisations have actually developed official stances on the possibility of aliens and intelligent life. After a long history of downplaying the importance of science, the Vatican has taken a more liberal approach in recent years. In fact, in an interview, the Pope's chief astronomer, yes, this is a real position, has welcomed the possibility of alien life. In some ways, it offers an opportunity for the Christian message to reach a wider audience. Who knows, perhaps Christianity might upgrade from a world religion to an intergalactic one. Other religions are a little more adapted to the idea of extraterrestrials and alien life. In many Buddhist traditions, there are already multiple realms of existence and myriad life forms out there in the cosmos. In other words, there's a chance of being reborn on another planet. In response to some of the challenges that these mainstream religions face, several UFO movements have argued that these faiths were originally the product of alien encounters. This is true for realism, which emerged in the early 1970s. Behind this religion is a man called Claude Forillon, known to his followers as Rael. He proposed the so-called Ancient Astronaut Hypothesis. It's the idea that the god of the Bible was actually an astronaut from a race of human-like aliens called the Elohim. According to Raelian doctrine, he cloned himself to create the first earthlings, Adam and Eve. Both were made in his image and likeness. Raelians believe that figures like Jesus or the Buddha have been mistaken for humans, but are actually this race of humanoid aliens in disguise. It might seem bizarre for sure, but I guess all religions have their quirks. The Bible itself ends with a vision of humanity living inside a giant golden cube, but you can learn more about that in my survival guide to the biblical apocalypse. These UFO religions are no strangers to controversy. This is particularly the case with Scientology, the most famous example of a UFO religion, even though, at first, it has nothing to do with flying saucers. Based on the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard, Scientologists practice a type of therapy called auditing, where subjects are purged of negative behaviours through intensely personal questioning, and a device known as an e-meter. This method has not been recognised by established medical institutions, who state that it has no grounding in any respectable psychological practice. Even in his lifetime, Hubbard was prosecuted for performing this therapy without the proper licensing. It's believed that Hubbard established the Church of Scientology to be exempt from these regulations. Others believe that he was inspired by genuine revelation from above. Ever since its inception, Scientology has garnered a reputation of being secretive. Accusations like abusive practices and charging adherents extortionate amounts to ascend the ranks have since come out. Detractors have even revealed secrets about the Church's deepest beliefs. According to Scientologist doctrine, our negative behaviours are embedded traumatic memories inherited from past lives that suffered from an intergalactic war under the evil Lord Xenu. The whole backstory is sprawling, epic and complicated, and is reminiscent of the many space operas that were big in the 1950s. Despite the various allegations, the Church of Scientology is still popular today, with centres to be found in a number of major world cities. There are some high profile members of Hollywood in the Church, many of whom get to travel on Hubbard's private cruise liner, the mysterious Sea Org. The word cult is often used by Scientology's critics, but this is certainly the case with a group that was known as Heaven's Gate. It was led by this man, Marshall Applewhite, a charismatic preacher who claimed to be a prophet and a witness to the coming apocalypse. Recruiting via the internet in the 90s, he taught that humanity did not have much time left and that there was a spaceship waiting to save his followers. This spaceship, he believed, was the comet Hale-Bopp, which was close to the Earth at the time. This culminated into a particularly dreadful event in 1997, where 39 members were found to have ingested a lethal substance. Naturally, Heaven's Gate disbanded shortly after. At what point does a religion become a cult? 
And when does a cult become a religion? Is it characterised by coercive and controlling behaviour? Or a charismatic leader who exploits their members? Or is it simply time and how long it's been around for? UFO religions carefully straddle these lines. One minute it's a religion and the next minute it's a cult. As mentioned earlier, they provide fascinating real-life case studies of how religions form and spread. In some ways, these UFO religions aren't so different to the mainstream faiths. Both emerge when one person or group claims to have obtained secret knowledge from heaven. Numerous world mythologies feature solar deities, weather gods and sky fathers. These UFO religions can be seen as a modern iteration of all this, substituting gods and prophets with aliens and contactees. In some ways, it's an attempt to bring the religion of old into the realm of modern science, or pseudoscience, depending on your perspective. The idea of alien life occupies a special place in pop culture and our collective imagination. Perhaps it's because it asks some of humanity's most fundamental questions. What does it mean to be human, and what's our place in the universe? For millennia, these questions have kept philosophers, religious thinkers and everyday folk searching, and perhaps we'll never get the answers that we seek. Maybe one day, we'll stumble across a lonely satellite sent from another world. Who knows, maybe first contact is closer than we think. Hey, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. UFO religions have always fascinated me, and so I'm really excited to have made this for you all. On screen now you can see some more of my videos. I cover all sorts of obscure topics, particularly to do with belief systems and mythology. If you like this video and want to see more, why not subscribe? A like and a comment also go a really long way. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.